Okay, well, um, here's my walkthrough tour of my 9798-4350 box van conversion. Um, we'll start with these mirrors. They're junky. I have new ones on order. I have chrome ones on order to match the rest of the chrome. I'll repaint this uh, and they will be replaced and new. Everything on this van virtually, at least internally and whatever, is new and the engine has fantastic, it runs perfectly. Um, there are a few little things I'm still working on or I can just sell as is and we can negotiate price. Um, for example, I, uh, but this would go with it anyway. I have the cover that goes down here that also gives a little bit extra arrow around the bottom. I already have an arrow skirt down there, but it would give it actually extend it farther. And I also intend to install a class three uh, receiver down there, belt, bolted to the bumper. It's not gonna be anything you can really do a lot with. Maybe pull the truck, but I doubt it. The bumper's not that strong. It's mostly just to add a different landing here for bicycles or whatever else, just to give you a little extra capacity for uh, uh, you know for car uh, cargo. You can put a little cargo case down there or something too. Um, Again, like I said, the mirrors are going. Uh, I'm just waiting any day they should be coming in, and then that'll be all be painted and all be new as well. Um, we have stainless caps. Uh, we come around to this side, and this is the cab, and the cab has all been redone. None of this, it's, you know, a lot of it, some of it is used, but barely. Um, and then, of course, uh, I've updated it. It was all industrial, commercial. It, I've, indust I've updated the, uh, you know, things like the... Uh, Visors with you know mirrors and stuff like that just to make it more comfortable for the average person. Up here we have a control panel. We have um, when it's lit, I'll show you. Actually, it's lit in the pictures and the still pictures, but we have a little mini amp there. Uh, I'm not a big stereo person, so uh, you know, there's some issues with that in terms of it picking up alternator noise. I don't know, I put filters on and everything else, but that's easily remedied by someone who knows better than me. Uh, but it sounds very nice, and actually, it's only really even noticeable when you first start it up because it's obviously charging more as you're driving. It fades out so much you don't even notice it. Um, but we got six six speakers. These speakers in the door also have their own little um, amplifier with each one of them. Um, they're Bose speakers uh, now. I took out the factory stuff and put Bose in behind there, uh, and they have their own little amplifiers that came with them. Um, we have the center seat here as well this could be removable it's not easily done in other words it's not expedient but if you didn't want that if you didn't have a third passenger you could remove that however the backs of it there is there we have seat belts for it that door is split for purposes I'll tell you about later and there will be you know little details like this scratching around the door I have a molding I'm gonna put there clean this up um, and this is a carbon fiber look material quite expensive um, actually all things considered I made matching moldings for the doors and so forth. This was all gray, similar to this. I decided just to leave that. It's a small area. It's more hassle than it's worth. Um, and it's black and gray anyway, so it fits the motif here. We have a backup mirror, which actually, one of the things I thought about after the fact is I would like to have um, actually wired that in permanently all the time so it could act like an actual rear view mirror and not just for backup. So that's another thing you might consider. I've changed the steering wheel console from just a regular steering wheel that just sticks out one way to a, you know, um, a telescoping up and down and um, cruise control. However, that's another little issue that needs to be handled. I apparently got one of 10 vans in the country because it was a commercial van only. It wasn't like a passenger van that, that didn't come with the cruise, but had it already programmed in the ECU. Mine is not. I've done everything that they say to do to get it to program. It doesn't, it doesn't program. It's got to be programmed at the dealership. Um, I don't have the, the um, uh, what do you call it, to get into the program and, and actually change the program. Air is ice cold. We have uh, remote control also for the rear view mirror. I have remote control here. Oh, yes. <sighs> oh. <sighs> I have remote control for the rear view mirror. Not, not that you can't reach everything and also for the stereo, but the stereo is also touch screen. Um, it's an MP5 player. It's also got video uh, capabilities. Uh, if you want to watch a, 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 a video or something like that, um, it is <clears throat> Bluetooth. Uh, it you know it, it just it has a multitude of, of, of applications that you can you use it for. Um, that is a true 120 almost 129,000 miles on there. 
<clears throat> on a 7.3 liter power stroke. Uh, it's been immaculately care cared for because it was a fleet vehicle. The reason the mileage is so low is because it spent a lot of its life on the side of the road parked while they did um, analysis of uh, cable TV systems and so forth. So it didn't have a lot of drive time. I have enhanced and highlighted the doors, again with a carbon fiber material. Add a little Ford uh, emblem here, which I'm sad to say cracked actually when I was installing it. Um, but it is what it is. It kind of gives it that old-fashioned motif, which I am kind of was going for and everything here too. The reason the doors are red is because the original doors were white, but they had no power or anything. Now we have power door locks. Okay, fully functional. Power windows, which I'll show you when I turn it on, which I'm going to do here in a minute. And these are actual truck uh, faux leather, which actually makes them softer. But it's like pleather. Um, you know, full, full on real truck seats. Um, they do have capacity for lumbar support and, um, and I think it's leg support also with this. If you attach a pump to this, which I was going to do, but I'm not going to do it now. When I was going to keep it, I was going to do that. Um, we have door hand, we have the seat handles, only one on this side. We have two, but there's no point in that because you have this one for rests. And when you put these two rests down, they serve all three seats because that seat's set back. So you actually use the back of that um, and you're nice and nice encapsulated, nicely encapsulated there. Use the back of that for the center person, and then the front person gets the you know the rest of the the rest of the of the rest. So it, it, you don't you're not sitting there move your arm kind of thing. You know it's, it all works works out really well. Um, and that seat is slightly higher, lower, so you you have vision through the mirror doesn't impair your vision either. Um, and so this is wireless also this mirror here. So the backup camera. So uh, you don't have a long uh, RCA cord, which is going to be impossible to get for this, to be honest. So if you actually have both those doors closed, you do have some interference sometimes uh, on the back uh, mirror. But if you, when I say doors closed, there's a second door back there that's also, also open right now. Um, but when you have those doors closed, so it's just easy enough to open this door if you have to, to back up. But it's not a problem all the time, just sometimes. So anyway, let me go ahead and start her up for you here. This is a first cold start in the morning. It's also first start in several days. So actually over a week, I think. But let's give it a try and see what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do just fine. Everything there cranks right up as you can hear and runs perfectly. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's strong. I have done some maintenance on that listed in the ad. Um, however, um, just to go over it briefly, <laughs> there's no brief. Um, just mostly, oh, let's turn that all the way down and off um, but you can see there's the there's the camera uh, the camera so it is touch screen you touch that that's your other you know next station next station so on and so forth volume again well actually not volume that's a that's an actual it's an actual search function search up here also scan multiple different things through different uh, modes and so forth um, more than you could probably ever use to be honest air conditioning again ice cold heat perfect in fact a new heat exchanger because that was a problem when I got it that is not an easy job and at the same time I also cleared out cleaned out the air conditioner um, and cleaned out the um, the condenser so that it not only smelled better but it got rid of a lot of leaves and stuff like that that had just worked their way in there so and it impaired the uh, flow actually so that's all been taken care of that's all been replaced um, when you the way I have it currently wired when you put it in reverse, that's when you get your backup cam. Um, also, when you put it in reverse, there's a big spotlight. Actually, there's three, two corner lights and one big spotlight in the back that also automatically come on. Now, I intend to actually, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> allergies. That's another thing. You have to forgive all the pollen that's all over the vehicle, making it look dirty. It's not really. Cleaned it just recently. Anyway, touch screen, turn it off touch screen turn it on car back you also have two video positions with this as well so again well set up um, let's see if we can shut this off and it still sounds like, no okay shut that off for now as you can see it has a clock it has the date it has all of that relevant um, what was I going to say? Okay, so yeah, starting with maintenance. Okay, so as I said, I cleaned out the air conditioner, cleaned out the condenser and everything on the inside too, cleaned a bunch of hair and 
just various other things out of there. So now it has fantastic flow, ice cold in here or nice and warm. Um, you also have the roof air back there, okay, but that's 110 volt. But between these two, I mean, you can run this one with this door open here and get plenty of coolant, plenty of coolant, plenty of cooling effect in this first cab, at least with the back door open, with the middle door closed. Let's go over here quickly. Okay, these are your side spots. This is your left side. I'm sorry, yes, left side. Side spot. Right side, side spot. I can show you that later, but it works. And the center one right now doesn't have a function. I actually want to, one of the other things I'm considering doing um, is taking the center switch and then wiring it to the two corner lights in the back because they really don't need to come on when you put it in reverse. Um, it, I, I think it's really too much on one circuit, number one. Number two, I think it's easily a manual thing. You don't need them in all cases. So if you're going to turn in a, case, in a way that you need the additional um, you know, lighting on the sides, then you can turn it on simply right here at, the, at this command feature, so at this switch. So um, it really doesn't, it, it'd be better that way. However, that's going to be difficult to do it very well because as you can see, those lights are back here on the corners and I got to run wire all the way from there all the way to the front in some manner and fashion that it works well and doesn't look bad and so forth. Probably along that top rail, um, but still, that's a lot of complicated work. It's a lot more work than it seems. It's got to go down inside the cab. I got to drill a hole in there, down inside the cab and under floorboards and whatever else. We have new carpeting, uh, new carpeting front and back actually everywhere. This is old carpeting. It doesn't have dog smells or anything like that in it. Um, it's new carpeting for the front and the back. Uh, it's all new materials basically too. Um, let me pop the hood just for a second. Well, you know what? Let's go to the front just real quick and give you a quick view on that. So, I've wired in daytime running lights, as you can see. Um, they are not factory standard on this. I've wired them in with relays and so forth. All done professionally in the right way. And I also have... Um, and I popped the hood. I also, I also have... Um, them wired in with these lights. When you turn those lights on, they shut off. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the parking lights. Okay, you get the blue lights with the parking lights. If you don't run the parking lights, you get the blue outer light and you get the daytime running light. When you turn it on full, when you turn it on full, the daytime running lights shut off and you, no, that's right. The daytime running lights come off when you turn the center spots on right here uh, to give you added light. The daytime running lights continue to give you a little extra illumination with the regular running lights. And I've upgraded the, the bulbs to halogens with, uh, with uh, magnifying, uh, magnified halogens. Then if you turn on these, spot, these spots up here, that's the center spots down there. And you can see we got 14.4 volts because we just started her up and she's charging up nicely. Um, you have more power outlets here. You have a 12 volt here and you have double USBs here. And then you can just put your phone, plug it into the charger and slide it up into the compartment up top and you can have plenty of space. I added a cup holder. I also altered this so Ford near infinite wisdom felt that we needed something that was like almost a foot deep. So you had to take everything out on top of it to get to anything in the bottom of it. That's brain stuff right there. Um, so I cut it out, put a floor in here and shallowed it and then you can get in here and actually have a different compartment. So yeah, that's uh, and you got your trailer brakes right here. It's flashing OC because we have an open circuit back there. It does that unless you're plugged in uh, and everything's operating. Uh, you have another 12 volt here, and this is actually uh, a cover from a Touareg that fits perfectly, so I finished it off of that. And another one here, which can be 12 volt or USB, radar detectors, whatever else you need. So you have multiple 12 volt sources up here for, uh, for charging various things. We have these extra little containers over here for holding your charger cords and everything else you might want to put up there. So we've tried to cover everything. You also have extra storage under this seat and that seat and that seat too, of course. Um, I got people walking by and waving and saying hi and it's nice and that's really a nice wave. But anyway, 
Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> enhancement for my video, folks. <laughs> okay. Anyway, she caught me at the right time. All right, so then you pop up the old hood here. Well, this is a two-handed job, of course. All right. Ah! Okay. And here's our engine, obviously. Battery, relatively new, um, within six months. Um, the second battery, which is, there's nothing much to see here, so I'm just going to put this down and let it go. You can just hear it and see it. The second battery is located under the skirting right here. It's fairly easy to get to, even though it doesn't look it. And actually, that's another thing I would have done if I kept this. There's a large void of space under there, and I would have cut that out and made that a slide drawer and added three or four more batteries and then a solar cell system on the roof. But of course, you guys are trying not to pay the price I'm already asking, so to do that, <laughs> you're not likely to want to pay the extra money for that. So, unless you wanted to pay for it, I'm not doing it. Okay, so anyway, also, no hot water. It has water, but no hot water. Again, could put two big black pieces of PVC up on the top, um, maybe one on either side, put air pressure, run a hose down the side that you can pump it up with air and put air pressure in them, and that would increase your water volume as well it would give you some solar heated hot water. And if, if it was too hot or you know whatever, you can mix it with the cold water like you would normally do in your house, hot and cold, and then you could turn it down a little bit. That would also save your hot water too because you wouldn't have to use as much. You might just want to take the chill off the water. But I gotta tell you, we showered with bu buckets last year when it was like um, 60 degrees outside, it was no problem. It was a little bit chilly at first, but it, it felt good when we were escaping a hurricane. So, um, that's the front, that's how she runs. I'm gonna turn her off here for a second. Let me, let me, let me rev it just a little bit for you so you can hear her revs. Smooth and quiet. Runs like a champ. I wish I could show you there's no exhaust, but I can't show that at the same time. So going over to the passenger side, same thing. Um, there's the uh, you know same Ford emblem and everything redone on this door as well. Oh, I needed to show you the windows, of course. Uh, yeah. Should have shown you that while it was running. Just got a little bit more power when the alternator's on, of course. So here we have our power windows going down. And then back up, and a little bit slowly without the, got a little bit of drag, but no big deal. Anyway, that's why I switched the doors, uh, and that's why it was just easier to do with, with, you know, instead of white doors, instead of changing all the mechanisms and everything, it was just easier just to change the doors. More expedient and easier to do. Um, there was no damage or anything to the doors. In fact, I sold the doors a few weeks later. Um, it, fire extinguisher, and there's another fire extinguisher in the back, which isn't attached, and I may or may not put that in there or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and here's the trailer that's also part of the deal if you decide to go with the whole deal. Um, this frame right here, I'm in the process of, there's the other halves over there, which is going to go across the top here, and it's going to create a combination of a tire rack and additional storage. Um, and then this is all going to be diamond plated in. I'm going to diamond plate this in where this big section here is missing. That's going to be a door on both sides. And that will give you access inside the trailer here. But it's going to be basically essentially a stone guard and a little bit of you know security. The diamond plate here in the front is going to go down to the top of the box and down the sides. And then when you need to open the box, it will have a door that you can also access with. It will just flap, fold up this way. You fold up the door, you open up the box. That gives us additional security because then nobody, because these locks are worthless. Nobody can open this up as long as that's down and it's locked. Um, yeah, they could with destroying the trailer, but other than that, not really. Um, I put it up here. It was down on the front tongue here, and it was a massive, <laughs> especially with this truck. There's no way I could turn a corner. I couldn't even turn a corner, let alone back up. It would jackknife. So, um, and somebody else did that a couple times. That's why, actually, the guy before me, I guess, cut these corners. It didn't come that way because uh, he was having the same problem with the pickup truck. Uh, I am, obviously going other directions okay so that concludes our 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 yeah that concludes our cabin uh, video now I'm gonna move on to the back LED also I've added a little, another little feature here which I'm not completely done with yet either because it's got to be finished so I can stop the rusting and plus I'm gonna put a, a T on the end of it here um, but you can open up this leg 
if you feel like you need a little additional support and you put the leg down right now I'm up on the concrete and the ground is lower so it doesn't touch but when you're on level surface and everything is at the same height then this will give you an extra leg for added support if you feel like it's necessary if somebody you know if you're a heavier individual or if you have a heavy individuals with you whatever the case may be just a little extra stability um okay the door obviously it has screen um it's screened in so you close close that up and slide that closed and you're closed in and but you still get plenty of air if you're in a mountain area somewhere or something or at the racetrack or whatever and it's nice and cool and you don't need the air conditioner okay so <clears throat> door is key locked of course I have privacy okay these steps I'm gonna try this one hand it's probably not gonna be that successful we'll try steps fold up you know what I'll show you this later when I have when I have help okay um, further down the passenger side of the vehicle again spare a gas tank um, and as you can see tires have very good life left on them at least 50% I'd say actually 75% uh, on all of them just actually rotated these because that's what you do um, the back are again in the same in the same condition Let's see okay um, then we have a little side light here again so this offers you you got your 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 um, you're awning down and you're sitting out there chilling and whatever and you got a little side light you can turn on right here again pollen I just cleaned this thing but it happens overnight okay so you got a little side light here you turn on and off um, also have the second spot up there so you have plenty of light on this side <coughs> then stepping back here now the pollen's starting to bother me <clears throat> stepping back here is our water center non potable gray water and fresh water no black water um, you attach your hose obviously here you have a vent here you put that all the way over there and then you vent it as you're filling the tank you can close the vent and you can continue pressure on the tank if you wish um, and actually bypass you can see there's water near so this is your water gauge it's kind of crude but effective um, and down here is your uh, gray water tank releases um, this is a direct release so that you can you know just run off the hose and and you don't need to you know you can hook up to a sewer somewhere and you don't need to run your tank at all this one back here runs the tank tank it dumps the tank into this so you can dump it when you get when you need to get when you get to a place where you need to dump the tank small tank um, gray water is probably about 20 yeah probably about 20 you don't need that much anyway though hand washing a little bit of showering wherever you need to I mean you might since it's gray water it really could just dump out on the ground it really doesn't have any uh, biological issues or whatever but anyway um, probably about 45 to 50 gallons on the fresh water tank underneath there too um, we'll go up inside here in a bit and we'll show you now this door um, cannot be tied back okay you, again you got the second door that it can open one of the purposes obviously I put this in here was because open that door was a, a pain and it was dangerous both cases um, which is why I put these stops on there too because if the wind catches them they're big heavy if you're in a parking lot next to somebody it could be a disaster um, the other thing is this obviously makes it easier to get in and out without having to open that whole big door waking everybody up and bothering everybody if they're sleeping or just convenience matters um, this step if you do this right you can stay hooked up to your trailer and it clears that tongue on that trailer perfectly and straight on but if you angled your truck that way just a touch and pulled the trail the steps over from the trailer if it doesn't touch you you can still use these steps while they're down the tricky thing is to remember and I'm gonna put a, I'm actually gonna put a, a label up in the front dash raise steps because if you don't obviously you jackknife immediately and you don't really hurt it because they do move but you can hurt it yes you can definitely hurt it so I wouldn't I wouldn't do it um, and that's on a very very strong steel bumper so it will definitely hold plenty of weight it's been welded in and everything and bolted uh, just for extra and all the the molding and everything also adds extra strength and, and finishing um, just over on the trailer a little bit and I got these baskets and stuff on here because these baskets actually will go in the truck you see they're black and they're copper and right now I've got them stored but the stuff that's in them will not um, but the trailer looks like a mess now I just cleaned it again uh, but you know that tree this time of year it's just dropping everything um, so anyway I'll blow it out and clean it but it's got it's got good steel ramps with diamond plate overlays going onto the diamond plate which is okay and I've diamond plated featured uh, you know all around this I'm gonna have the diamond plate stone guard up there um, I've added a light up under there which is not wired in yet there's a battery that will go inside the toolbox that runs the winch it's a 2500 pound winch 
Um, and I'm not selling the trailer separately. I'm only selling the trailer with a truck package. If I'm not selling the trailer, I mean, if someone's just interested in the truck, I'll do that, but I won't sell the trailer separately. Okay, so your battery goes here. Your winch gets attached to it. It works, it's 2,500 pounds. I have pulled that Touareg with the brakes locked onto this trailer with a little bit of help, but it did no problem. The only thing it did have a problem with was the cable was rubbing on the back of the trailer and we almost rubbed through the cable. That was the only issue we had. That was a friction thing though. Anyway, I fixed that, we got it up, um, and we unlocked the brakes too. So, you know, that's quite a pull. And the trailer and this truck combination have pulled these two regs without any problem. You could do it at 85 miles an hour if you want to do it. I don't, I'm not saying I did because that would be illegal, right? So anyway, but, okay, so here's my class three that I got, I'm glad I found that because I was just about to look for it. My class three receiver that I'm gonna put on the front here. I actually cut that piece off of the extension for my hitch. I bought an extension for it and it had that and that hung down off the bottom of the off the bottom of the class three on that extension because the actual hitch is way up underneath there. And it was just it would hit everything, it would scrape and everything and it was totally unnecessary because that height is already perfect with just about any trailer at level uh, at level position. So <clears throat> um, I just I just eliminate it. you don't want to go lower. If anything you want to go higher is what I'm saying. So you turn over your receiver, you know, you get a, <clears throat> I had that one straight hitch in there with the uh, multiple pieces, that would work. And then I've got this hit, this receiver, and if you rotate that to the other side, then obviously you have more height. So if you have a heavier trailer, it's adjustable. Um, so I need to wire in those lights. I'm gonna put a switch over here and there's gonna be another light down there. So you have lights forward and light, lights back so you can hook up and so forth. These <clears throat> are your stops, obviously. Stops are completely adjustable. You can move it from this eye to that eye for a shorter vehicle. This is for the Touregs. Um, you got the pins in here, you pull the pins out, you take off one cap, slide the bar out, slide it over there and do that. Or And or if you have a low race car, for example, like Mazda RX-8s don't go on here without this because they have the low front end and so forth. You can pull this all the way out to the side. You can't do it with one hand. You can see a slide that way, but it wants to be a jerk coming this way. There we go. Two hands. Okay, anyway, I can pull it to the side, and then I can run the, uh, the front end of the uh, Mazda over it and slide it in the gap between the front wheel right here, in this gap, okay, or in that gap, between, right down here, between the front wheel and the front air dam. Slide it back in and then pull the car up the rest of the way, and you have a nice tight fit without ripping off your front end. Um, unless your car is so low that it can't get over that bar. <laughs> Then you'd have to make, or that hook, you'd have to make some adjustments on your car, take it off or whatever. However, the rest of it fits perfect. Again, that spot will be underneath there so you can see. I have multiple hooks. That hook, those hooks can be used for tie downs. I have tie down hooks in the corners, tie down hooks in the fenders here, which also act as your pivot points. And as you can see, I have releases here. And the reason I have releases is because the way this fender used to come off, there used to be one solid fender and it had bolts screwed into the, uh, support there with a wing nut. It was a real pain in the butt to not only line up, but to take on and off because the wing nuts and everything else. Well, I converted it to make it more U-Haulish to where the whole fender, this allows you ingress and egress into the car, obviously. So the whole fender comes down to the side like that, and then you get in and out of the car, and then when you're done, you put it back up and it pulls the tag and everything out of the way. So you pull that out of the way and you don't your tag's not in the way when you when you pull up, see it overlaps a little bit, but then it pulls it out of the way, you don't have a problem. Okay, so you just put those back on, snap them down. There's a lot of conversion involved in this, for sure. Um, brakes on this are brand new. Um, wheel bearings, uh, too, and seals are, are also uh, either reconditioned. I think the, the back brake, the brake side, the unbraked axle, I just cleaned and, and re-greased the bearings and so forth and put new seals in it. The brake axles, I replaced the bearings and the seals and the brakes themselves. So, and that's been done with less than 100 miles, with less than 100 miles. So, uh, what else? I guess that's the features on the trailer. Which is, oh, okay. So, okay, so I lost, had four gigs of memory used up that quick. I have no idea how, but anyway. Um, now I've got a bigger memory card. So anyway, I was saying on my details on here, for example, this is bushing, uh, a bushing from a, an old Dorman uh, uh, 
truck hinge set for another truck that I had that I've kept around. So it'll keep your wood from degrading and it makes it smooth and tight. It doesn't bang around and whatever. It's in there nice and tight and quiet and smooth. Okay, so you put that down. My sons and I built a lot of this fan actually. And my son took this to work and uh, to school, I mean, and he uh, cut out the, the um, piece for the top of this and so forth. And it's recycled. And then I did the side wood and so forth. And it's all real wood. Um, and then you have your cup holders, muy importante. So you can take this door. I've got it tied back now. And you can pull it back over here if you wanted to. And then you can put this on there to keep the door open if there's any wind, or if there isn't any wind, I should say, but if there's light wind, I wouldn't do it if there's a strong wind. And my tree just dumped crap all over everything. I love it. Um, so anyway, um, and then you can stand here and just yeah, do your party, whatever, do what you, what, what you want to do. Now, another plan I have for that, another plan I had um, is to, right now I've got storage in here. Let me take this off by the pin like that because I don't want it to hang out. It's got to get out of the way. Okay, so right here, this all comes, stands up. This isn't in this place, in this space when this is up. But I wanted to make, right now I've got storage and so forth in there. I'm carrying a hinge, uh, hinge hitch and stuff like that, which I would put in the side box actually uh, in the future. But tools and whatever, so they're easy, like, easily accessible from here. This opens up on three sides, this pedestal. It opens up on that side in the front and the back here. So you can pretty much access it from anywhere. You don't have to open this door when you're inside, comfy, cozy, in a, in a warm truck or cool truck, whatever the case may be, and open this big old door to access it. It's accessible from there. And technically, you can access it from here, too. Okay, so um, what I had in mind, envisioned, and I may still do this, uh, depending on how long it takes me to sell this, but if not, I'm passing the idea on to the next guy, is to have a burner, uh, which I'm going to salvage from a, it's brand new, but from a, an older barbecue that I picked up. I'm going to have it on a tray, it slides out here, burner, place your gas can down here on a bumper, your, your 20 pound can, a container or whatever, or even small one up here, whatever you want to do, options. Anyway, and then you can pull this right out here and you can sit here and cook your breakfast or whatever. And of course, I'd have a heat guard up here to pre prevent you from melting your, your dinette set, which is, I'm moving on to this too, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. This dinette set is, stands up. I want to actually show it to you. Stand, sit up first. Well, I don't need to. Here it is laying down. Anyway, um, it's a, it's, it's two pieces of a, uh, of a um, futon. And um, you stand it up, you lock it up and so forth, and then you put that table in the middle and you have a dinette. That is a Murphy bed, which is down now. I will put it up later. You can see the curtains. Uh, the curtains are not actually done yet. I need to have the curtains done. And actually, the, it says the simple life going this way, but I kind of like the grain that goes that way. I'm not sure, but every, all the other grain goes straight up and down, so that's the way I'm going to put it anyway. I just have to have made, but for now, I put them up there for, um, you know, I, I, idea effect. Here's one of the things I need to fix. This is my bad. Um, I pulled on this a little bit hard and uh, it's a two-piece thing and I got frustrated uh, and I ripped it apart so I got to fix that. It's no big deal. Um, the little piece on top of it's going to take me longer than this entire piece because there's so many detail cuts in there to make it fit properly with the bed coming down and everything. But what that essentially is, is that gives you end access like this to uh, this area here which goes all the way back there and that you can see is the cushions that go up on the bed up here So the cushions are stored in this it also opens them to the top So you take the cushions out first you put the table in there for storage <clears throat> You take those cushions out you put them up on top of the Murphy bed Now the Murphy bed also doubles as an extra space uh, And you can see there's a railing in there for safety and so forth, but it also uh, And then by the way 100, 190 100 almost 200 pound people have been up there no problem and it holds up just fine. Uh, it can't really go anywhere. It's captured. It's captured on that ledge. Plus, it's got the cables. It really is well supported. Um, but it also doubles as a as additional counter space. If you are working back here with that counter there and this counter here, you can sit there and do your work over there. And that's rubber covered over there to protect it. And then you can store parts or whatever over here while you're doing it. That's the whole purpose here. Uh, it's trying to be as as multi purple multi use as possible. Now, I've displayed a couple of these cases uh, crates here 
That again, I wanted this space for crates. It's easily accessible. Um, it's in and out to load uh, or unload. And if you put this cabinet down, this shelf, which if you see the detail, I even did the bottom of that with the same as the roof. I mean, there's a lot of detail in this entire truck. Uh, it needed to look professional, it needed to be professional. The paint on the outside is irrelevant. That's all it takes, it's a paint job. Um, I've left that for you guys. If you have team colors or whatever, you can do that. Or I can go get it painted for you for additional value or whatever for, you know, just paint a white. Um, but you can stack these all the way floor to ceiling, literally. Okay, that's why that folds down. When that folds down in the folded down position, which I'll do later, um, you can stack this all the way to the top. I put a D-ring in the bottom here and a D-ring in the roof there for you to put a, um, a strap. Not a come along necessarily, but a pull strap because it's captured on three sides when this door is closed, but this side is open. You put a strap there, nothing can fall over. It won't go anywhere. Everything's captured. <clears throat> um, there's your, your rod to pull down your, your awning. Um, and we have 12 volt, 110 volt on everything in here. We also have it, like I said, on an inverter or on the generator, as you saw, or running the truck. Um, again, I tried to give every possible consideration to just about everything here. Now, down here you see a light. There's a light. Now, I turned it on. It's working. The reason why it's working right now is because the door is open. When you, and that allows you to come out the door at night if you have to go to the restroom or whatever, and you can see steps and not kill yourself. Okay, but when you close, see, close the door, it shuts off automatically. That's the kind of features I put into this. It didn't come with this. I put it in. Okay, so now you can also shut that off so that you don't leave it open. If your door is going to be open for a long time, you don't leave it on. Um, the rear tail lights are all updated to digital. Digital. Uh, yeah. Also in the cab, I forgot this too. You know, you got a brand new LED light up there. Can also shut it off from up there so that it doesn't come on when the door is open, or you can turn it on. And then, of course, it turns on and off with the factory OEM um, on and off switch when the cab doors are closed. So. Uh, okay, um, actually, we still have a little bit to show on the side here, okay? We have a, a, a newish, uh, repurposed uh, awning. It has a few new parts on it. It's been completely cleaned up and re repurposed and so forth. The awning itself is about six months old. Um, unfortunately, here's one other sad thing. I built this primarily for me to go racing again. Um, my kids are heavily involved in soccer. They have pro soccer potential, so I'm actually supporting that now instead of going back to racing. Um, I can't, I don't have the funding or the time to do both. Uh, most every time they want to, they have a soccer tournament or something, it's on a weekend, I have a race, so it's competing. So, um, I built this primarily for that, but it's also very good RV. It has not seen a racetrack yet. That's super frustrating for me, but it is what it is. Um, there's windows here. All these windows open. These, these windows here slide, and that window is an awning window, which you can leave open most of the time. It doesn't get rain in. I wouldn't do it while I'm traveling, though, just because it's just a lot of wind coming in. Um, but, you know, any other time you can leave it open. So there's a lot of cross breeze in here. It's good circulation. If you left the front doors open or front windows, you get it front to back and side to side. It really keeps it nice and comfortable because this is also 3-inch insulated um, you know, this isn't the skin. This is the outer skin. It's not the inner skin. It has a quarter inch. Or actually, I think it's, it might be three-eighths. Anyway, it's got, um, I think it's three-eighths. Three-eighths inch plywood. It's also laminated, fiberglass laminated, uh, or some kind of lam lamination uh, throughout. In the back, it's all fiberglass laminated. Um, and so it's also quite waterproof. Um, this is an auxiliary gas tank, um, which I don't use. It was diesel for the diesel generator. I, it needs to be drained. I haven't done that. I don't intend to do that anytime soon, to be honest. But my, my plan was I was going to drain it, convert it to fuel, and I was going to have a fuel pump located on this side. It would be easy to do this, too, by the way, um, fairly inexpensively. It's just a, time, a little bit time-consuming I don't want to do. To my generator over here, I was going to have a fuel pump located over here somewhere in a side panel. You turn the switch on, and you have a marine disconnect like you use on portable tanks and a boat and you attach it to the fuel line on this and then you can just refill this tank this tank gets easily eight hours uh, so you don't have to worry about it through an entire night of sleep um, if you're not using a lot say you don't have to use the air conditioner at all you'll get 10 hours um, <clears throat> but so I've made this also so that this I'll show you later when I have someone else taking the pictures but this slides out 
comes out and then the whole generator can be removed from this and taken trackside or wherever you want to go with it if you need to go with it somewhere with it. Um, but yeah, back to the fuel pump. So you hook up a fuel pump, you have the fuel pump here, you can replenish that tank without ever even taking it out or anything like that. And then you can just keep doing that. That's like about a 20 gallon tank on the other side at least, 20, 25 maybe, maybe more. Um, it might be as much as 30, but anyway, I've never tested it, I've never filled it, so I don't know. Um, and then, but like I said, you'd have an extra, so if you're out in the wilderness somewhere and you don't want to pack up and go to a gas station, you'd have days of generator power. Um, I've also, there's an inverter in here as well. That's another thing I need to finish up. I need to run good, really big wire to the battery on the other side to give that inverter, to make that inverter work. But here's your shoreline, and here's your cable TV. And let's put this back down again. And when you pull that generator out, you can set this drawer right on top of it, and it gives you rain protection. And so you can, I, I, when I'm st stopped and parked for any length of time, I pull the generator out just to give it more breathing room, cool it down, and also get the CO2 away from, not CO2. CO2 too, but no, this is carbon monoxide away from the truck. I never have a problem with it though, and it has a carbon monoxide um, alarm and uh, smoke alarm combination inside. Um, you come back here, and you have your storage for your shoreline cables. This, there's only one. Oh, I thought I unlocked that. I guess I locked it. What did I do? Okay. This. Hmm. How could I have left it unlocked? There's no way. Okay, anyway. Um, this is a nice weather type box and so forth, but basically you could put jack stands in here, whatever you feel like doing. Right now, this is the shoreline cables. Actually, there's one more cable for this that can tie to this one to give you an extra length. It starts off with a smaller one and goes to a bigger one, so you can keep your, uh, your amperage down on it. Um, this little box doesn't seem like much, but what it actually is is you put those cords through with the plug inside here, and it provides rain protection, so you don't get any rain under your connections here. And it would float, uh, it would stay upright because the cords are on the top. I've already tested it, it works fantastic. Also, you see there's a light right there. Now you can turn that light on and off manually, or you can just leave it on because there's a switch right here that shuts it off when you close the door, like a refrigerator. So you close the door, the light shuts off. Leave it on, the light stays on. Okay, <clears throat> now this door, is the back door, obviously, one side of the back door. And as you can see, it not only has a window and lines and so forth, but it also has this desk, this table top that you can hardly even see. Um, but 